I still know folks manually clicking through vSphere to deploy every VM. In a world driven by automation and AI, that workflow is outdated and painfully slow. You're wasting time, risking errors, and missing out on repeatable, scalable deployments. In this video, I'll show you how to automate Ubuntu 2404 VM creation on vSphere using Terraform. Fast, clean, and fully customizable. Let's bring your infrastructure into the modern era. And we're building on from the last video on how we created a template with Packer. So if you haven't watched that video, go back and watch it. I'll have a link for it in the description below and you'll find it here. And then come back and watch this video. Let's go. All right, so we are on the vCenter UI here and you can see I have the Ubuntu 2404 template that was generated with Packer under the templates folder. And I have a bunch of VMs running right now, but we're gonna create two VMs using Terraform. So let's jump into my code here and you can see that we have the vSphere folder and under vSphere, we got a Packer folder and a Terraform folder. So the Terraform folder is what we're interested in. And you can see the readme is pretty comprehensive. You can go through it quickly. I just want to show you what versions I'm using. So for vSphere, vCenter 7.03, ESX High version 6.7, Terraform 1.57, and Ubuntu, of course, 2407. And vSphere provider, I'm using 2.12. And prerequisites, of course, you need Terraform installed. I have 1.5.7. You need to access, of course, a vSphere environment and you need the Ubuntu 2404 template that was created with Packer in the Packer directory that I just showed you. Some of the features, we can deploy multiple VMs in parallel using the for each and customize VM resources, of course, CPU, memory, disk. And of course, you can use either static or DHCP IP address configuration. We're using cloud init integration for first boot customization. You can of course add packages as you install into the VM and SSH key injection for secure access. And we use the EFI firmware support for modern boot. We have a number of files here I'll go into as we run this, but of course you need Terraform init, Terraform plan, Terraform apply to get this going. We can create multiple VMs using the for each meta argument, and this local variable is defined in the variables.tf file here, which we'll see in a little bit. But you can see you can specify the name, the IP address, number of CPUs, RAM, disk size for each of your VMs. And you can continue to add more VMs to create with Terraform, just like what Terraform does very well with its state file. And then the project structure, we have a main.tf file where we define our VM deployment, we have variables.tf, we find all the variables and we have an outputs file so we can get the VM IPs, addresses and names, and then a templates folder where we have our metadata and user data files in here. There are a number of configuration options such as CPU, RAM, disk size, and a few others that you see over here. And then the output will look something like this. This is the output dot tf file here so we're going to iterate over the different ip addresses that we're generating for the vms and of course the vm names as well and we're using cloud init configuration you can do a bunch of things here like ssh key injection network config host name config package installation efi for our firmware con configuration and a bunch of troubleshooting steps as well so with that let's go ahead and run terraform init and then run Terraform plan. And as you can see here, we're about to make two changes, two additions. If you scroll up, you'll see that creating basically two VMs. So here's VM two and here is VM one. All right. So let's go ahead and run Terraform apply. With Terraform apply, it always runs a Terraform plan first, and then it asks you if you want to proceed. I'm going to say yes, and that will go out and generate our VMs. And notice it's creating them in parallel because there's no dependencies between them. So it will both create the VM1 and VM2 at the same time. 
If we go here, you can see there we are, Ubuntu 2404 VM1 and VM2 are being created. If we look at the tasks at the bottom here, you can see we're cloning the machines. All right, so we're cloning the machines from the template over here. So let's go through our configuration. We'll start off with the main.tf file here. And this is where we're defining the provider that we're going to use. And we use the vSphere provider at the time. This was the latest version of the provider. It's always good to pin the version. So later, somebody else is going to run this Terraform config that they have or know exactly what is being used. But of course, you can also take a look at the Terraform lock file and you see that we've locked the version down to 2.12 for the vSphere provider. Then the provider vSphere, you have to supply it with the username, the password to be able to access vCenter and the vCenter server and allowing unverified SSL true for self-signed certificates. Some data sources here to allow Terraform to read some of the attributes from the existing infrastructure. So we're getting all of that. So we're getting the vSphere data center name, the data store, the compute cluster, the network, the vSphere network, the vSphere virtual machine template, which is what we're going to use to clone that template into our virtual machine. And then this is really what we're building, a resource of type vSphere virtual machine, that's the VM. And we're using a for each loop to loop over the different VMs that we want to build in parallel. And some basic VM settings, such as the name, the cluster resource pool, the data store for VM files, and all of that we grabbed from the data blocks at the top. Then here we can see the number of CPUs and we're iterating over the value of the CPUs within the for each here. And the number of cores per socket, the memory, the guest ID, and then the network configuration, each VM gets one network adapter. So network from data source, we are getting that from the data block and the adapter type, we're using the same one as in the template. And then some disk configuration here, each VM gets one disk. If you want the VM to have more than one disk, then of course you can add that as well. But here we're creating a thin provisioned disk that is matching the template and also the eagerly scrub option as well. And the size, we're grabbing that also from the locals variable. Here's where we are cloning the template. And now we have some cloud init configuration for our first boot customization. So this passes the metadata and user data into our VM using this extra config block. Metadata includes your network configuration and host name. So you can see the name, the IP address, and then user data includes your SSH keys and packages that you want to install. So all of that is passed through a template file. And the first input to the template file function is the metadata template, which is defined over here. And then the second piece is the variables that we want to feed into the template, in this case, name and IP address. And then the second template file function here gets the input of the user data template file. And then we're passing in the name of each of our VMs we'll use inside of that template. Then we have a life cycle config to prevent any unnecessary changes. So we don't want to update if annotations get changed or if the template UID changes or if DNS server changes or network config changes. In this case, this will recreate the VM for us. It will just not run. Terraform will not run it again. And then firmware config, we're using EFI instead of BIOS and we're disabling secure boot for compatibility. And that's our main.tf. Our next file that we want to look at is really the metadata.yaml file. So this is a template file that we're using here. And we saw before that we were passing the VM name as a variable. So local host name and instance ID will be passed in here. Here we got the network config. So we're using NetPlan version two and we have ethernet interfaces using ENS192, the first network adapter, which is typically VMware's VXNet3. And we are disabling DHCP because we want to use static IP config. In this case, we're passing the IP version four address as a variable and the gateway 
and also the name servers here with the search domain and the addresses for the name servers. We're also looking at the storage config. So we're automatically growing the root partition to use available space. Finally, boot config, waiting for the network to be available before proceeding with our boot. Wait on network IPv4 is true. So waiting for IPv4 connectivity. And then our user data. Here we have our users that we want to define. Username from variables.tf and also SSH authorized keys. You can pass in the public keys that we want on this machine so we can SSH into it. And here we're granting passwordless pseudo access and the group to add the user to the pseudo group and then defaulting the shell for the user. And we're installing one package here to keep things simple, just the tree package. Of course, you can list a bunch of packages here as well. And I can see that the output is done here and the machines have been created in about six minutes. Two machines have been added. Here are the IP addresses. We define those as static IPs and the names of these VMs as well. So if we jump back into vCenter, I can see that they're up and running both machines here. This is the VM1 machine. And you can see the IP address 97 and VM2 is the 98. And if I want to SSH into them real quick, I can run SSH Ubuntu at the first one. Dot one dot 97. And of course I ran this before our video. So I just need to take this out and then run it again. And now it should be dropped into the machine. There we go. And I can see my tree is running that package I installed. And also Docker, if you recall, that was installed with Packer. So it's already inside the machine when we cloned it. Okay. And let's exit from this. And the same thing would be for our dot 98. Let's clear this again and SSH once again. And there we go. We got Docker and our tree utility as well. That's perfect. We can exit from here. And from a configuration point of view, we saw the main, the output.tf is what we saw in the output as well, where it's iterating over our virtual machines to give us our IP addresses and our VM names. And the one last thing I want to show you is the terraform.tf vars example. This is where you define your IP address for the vSphere user, the vSphere password, and the vSphere or vCenter IP address. And then also the vars.auto.tf vars, this is where you define the CPU, the RAM, the disk size, your, the name of your vSphere data center, the cluster name, the data store, the network, your DNS server list, IP, v4 gateway, and NetMask, and the template that we're using. And then finally, in the variables.tf file, this is where we define all our variables that we're using throughout. So these are standard variables that you use with Terraform. However, at the very bottom of this file is where we define our locals, our local variables. And this is really specific to the VMs we want to configure. So I have, as you see here, VM1, and this is the name I'm giving it, the IP address, a static IP, the CPU, RAM, and disk size, the same for both VMs. And again, another name for VM2 and another IP for VM2. And some common template variables here, like the IPv4 gateway, the DNS server one and two, the public key and the SSH username. So all that can be used within our configuration. And that's it, really. It was very simple. It took us six minutes to clone and create two VMs, all done programmatically from Terraform. We didn't have to go in and mess around with clicking. And when we're done, we can easily run Terraform Destroy. And what that's going to do is going to first, of course, ask us if we really want to destroy the machines. And it gives us that there are two that are being destroyed here. And if you scroll up, you'll see everything that's going to get destroyed. And if you're happy with that, you just type yes. And that is going to destroy our machines in a few minutes. And it's very helpful when you are testing and running some changes maybe later. You can add a VM, remove a VM, and all that is controlled once again by 
the locals variable file variable here. So if I want to add another VM, I can just simply go ahead and add another VM. So it's pretty simple that way. If I want to make changes to a specific VM, I can make a change. And if that change is something like this, if that change is requiring that I recreate a VM, it will tell me. So Terraform is going to tell me that it's going to destroy and then replace that VM as well. And there you go. Destroy complete resources to destroyed. We have finished destroying the two VMs. And if you go back to the vCenter UI, we see our two VMs have been removed successfully. And that is it for this video. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. And I will catch you in another video.